Welcome back to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And we're here with another Bob Dylan review. We're on to an album called Bringing It All Back Home. This is the fifth album in Bob Dylan's career, and it is a pretty huge one historically. So with his fourth album, Another Side of Bob Dylan, it kind of felt like our hero was entering his cocoon. On Bringing It All Back Home, he emerges as the butterfly. So part of the reason why this album is so iconic is because of its first song, Subterranean Homesick Blues. That song is iconic in part because it was the subject of a, a, a sort of music video kind of thing. It was actually part of a weird documentary about Bob Dylan. But more importantly, marked the emergence of a new sound for Dylan. No longer was he this purist just playing a guitar and harmonica. Uh, no, this time he brought in a full backing band and he was playing electric guitar. Here was not just folk, but folk rock. So the album continues the approach of another side of Bob Dylan in that it distances Bob Dylan from his once political image. But while the second album did that in an explicit and emotional way, this album more so does so with cool detachment. Sure, you'll occasionally hear Bob saying something like, I'm on the pavement thinking about the government, but we don't know what he's thinking about the government and he doesn't particularly wanna tell us or if that thinking is real. This album made me realize the obvious. Uh, doing snappy reaction videos to Bob Dylan albums from this point onwards is not really gonna make sense because it feels like each track here is an epic. And if you wanted to write an essay about each individual track, you could probably do that. So I'm not gonna capture everything about this album, but hopefully I'll, I'll give you a sense. The simplest track for me to react to was track number three, Maggie's Farm. Uh, it has a similar electric groove to Subterranean Homesick Blues, and it's one of the few on here that does actually function as a coherent protest song. So Dylan sings about the different kinds of horrible bosses one could have, the one that overworks you, the one that chastises you, the one that hides behind religion. It also kind of works in hindsight, I think you could say, it also works as a protest song because one thinks of Maggie Thatcher, though obviously Bob Dylan was not singing about her in the 1960s. Track four is another real favorite of mine. In the first four tracks of the record, we get Dylan alternating between cynical rockers and love songs. And because it's Dylan, these love songs are just, my baby's sweet, my baby's pretty. No, they are nuanced as heck. So in this song, track four, Love Minus Zero, No, no Limit, Bob Dylan continues the premise of a song from his last song, album. That song being, I Just Wanna Be Friends With You. Here he says, my love, she speaks like silence without ideals or violence. Uh, so his two high-profile girlfriends before, Suze Rotolo and Joan Baez, were very political people. And now he's starting to wonder whether he can truly be loved by someone who he sees as loving him for political commitments that he's all too easily able to become cynical about. Bob Dylan wants a love that's something deeper. It's not about superficial philosophical values. It's about, I guess, just do fundamentally jive as people. And hopefully the political stuff works out too. I also really like the last line of this song. My love, she's like some raven on my window with a broken wing. Partially, it just sounds cool, but I think it's also a wonderfully ambivalent image of a partner who both has power, ravens being wise birds and the powerful subject of Edgar Allan's Poe, said the raven, nevermore. Uh, but it's also clearly someone that needs to be taken care of. So you want this two-sided relationship because the raven has a broken wing. The most beautiful song on this album is probably Mr. Tambourine Man. It follows two epic but more forgettable songs in On the Road Again and Bob Dylan's 115th Dream. On those two previous songs, it had felt Bob Dylan was taking advantage of the cool catchiness of his backing band, so he did not have to bring much melody to them. Uh, and again, this is, this is why it's kind of complicated to review these records, because some of the most detailed songs lyrically are the less interesting ones musically, and it's hard to know in the balance how much time to give to them. So I'm trying to be relatively concise here. So if a song is not too interesting musically, uh, I'm not gonna say too much about them. But what I will say about those two songs that I'm skipping over is that they have this kind of cool poetic concept behind them conflating hippie goofiness with figures of imperial conquest like Napoleon, Columbus, and Captain Ahab. I, I guess it's a way of saying arrogance and great quests for manliness are inherently absurd, uh, but 
I, I feel like these pieces are almost better being enjoyed as poems. Anyway, after those songs comes Mr. Tambourine Man, which by contrast is beautiful in its melody and its lyrics are also pretty beautiful too. Uh, so it's Mr. Tambourine Man seems to be about the fact that Dylan still wants to believe in something. He doesn't like that all his songs are cynical, uh, but he doesn't really know what to believe in. So he just talks about going on this sort of vague magical journey. Take me for a trip upon your magic swirling ship. Now, speaking about desires to believe, I also wonder if Dylan is unconsciously prophesizing his future Christian phase on this record. Uh, there's a song that has, there's a song that sounds like kind of a grim gospel tune on here called The Gates of Eden. The kingdoms of experience in precious winds they wrought, white poppers changed possessions, each one wishing for what the other has got. And the princess and the prince discuss what's real and what is not. It doesn't matter inside the gates of Eden. Now, supposedly a real favorite song of Dylan's from this album was It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding. This is one where the title has always intrigued me since it sounds like it's referencing the far more innocent song That's All Right, Mama by Arthur Crudup and made famous by Elvis Presley. So when I look at the title of this Bob Dylan song, what I see it as saying is we're in a new generation now. Rock is no longer fun. It's no longer, that's all right, mama. It's that's all right, Ma, I'm only dying. And so this song, it's a long acoustic blues bit with some dark lyrics and also, again, some biblical influences, supposedly Ecclesiastes. This song is a particularly famous cynical line, he who's not busy being born is busy dying. And beyond that, its message seems to be, look, Ma, I don't know what to tell you. Everyone's stuck inside one cynical religion or another, and no one is doing well as a result of their beliefs. The final song on this album is another beautiful one and another melodic one, uh, though I'm not a huge fan of the version on here. I think if you want to listen to the best version of It's All Over Now, Baby Blue, maybe listen to Bob Dylan singing it on his Rolling Thunder review. A lot of people understand this song is Dylan saying, the old Dylan is gone. From now on, I'm primarily going to be playing electric guitar and not writing folk songs like this one. Uh, but he, he gave us a few more old sounding folk songs like Mr. Tambourine Man and It's All Over Now, Baby Blue, to say goodbye. Leave your stepping stones behind. There's something that calls for you. Forget the debt you left. That will not follow you. So yes, it feels like abandoning his old sound is wrong and people are going to boo him for it but he knows he has to take the next step. And this next step is Rock and Roll Dylan. So I'm wondering if you could make the case this is the best Bob Dylan album, just in terms of the sheer number of classics on it. Subterranean Homesick Blues, Maggie's Farm, Mr. Tambourine Man, It's All Right Mama, Only Bleeding, Love Minus Zero, No Limit, and It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. And again, the thing is with Bob Dylan albums, even the forgettable songs are pretty interesting compared to the interesting songs that other people would write. Uh, so absolutely, if you're going through music history, trying to listen to the classics, listen to this one for so many reasons, uh, whether it's the intertextuality, subterranean homesick blues, sort of being a cover of Chuck Berry's monkey business, but bringing it into a new age uh, for the fact that it has the one half of the album being Dylan's new electric sound and half of it him bringing it back to his acoustic sounds. There's a lot that's interesting on this record. And again, because there's so many lyrics, so much more you could look into than I've talked about today. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig von B. See you next time. Thank you.